Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I want to show you how you can create drum rolls and cymbal swells in M Drummer. Someone was asking about this recently, and I thought I'd go over it. It's actually not that difficult, but you know, if you're just starting, it can be intimidating. I know there's lots of stuff in M Drummer, so I thought I'd just make a quick video and show you how you can do this. So I'm just using the Midnight Rocker. Uh, preset here. This is from Drum Empire 2020 if you haven't downloaded that yet. It sounds really good. It just sounds like this. It's a basic rock style kit. When you're doing this, I recommend using acoustic drums for the cymbal swells and even for the rolls if you want them to sound realistic. Of course, if you're, you know, using like an 808 kit and you have, uh, you know, like those hi-hat uh, uh, rolls, it's okay if those don't sound realistic. They're supposed to sound, you know, robotic. But if you want a realistic, you know, roll sound, uh, you should probably use an acoustic kit because they have more velocity layers. But let's get into it. So we have the rhythm editor here. I'm just going to choose a blank beat here. So it repeats over and over again. And you can do it on pretty much anything. I'm going to use the snare here. I'll put something in here so you can hear what it sounds like. Ooh, I have the, for some reason the velocity is all, all the way down. Move that up a bit. There we go. So the snare just sounds like this. There we go. Also, some of them even have snare swirls in here. So if in some cases, you don't actually need the uh, to do the uh, rolls manually. So you hear it kind of has that, that bounce to it. But if for example, you don't want to do it on a snare drum, or let's say your snare drum doesn't have this snare swirl on there and you want to just create a roll, I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing is we need to make the division of this smaller. If you notice here, it's like now we're on 16th notes, and that's fine, but that's nowhere near fast enough to make a drum roll. What we need to do is actually go into here and look for a smaller subdivision. But luckily you see here, we have all sorts of small subdivisions. Let me try something like, I could try this one. I don't even know what this is, septuplets, sextuplets, I don't know. It's something fast. And then you're thinking like, okay, this is so small, how am I supposed to you know, get in there and put them in here? So just go here at the very bottom, it says 70, just move it larger, 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 like this until we can actually see it. And then from here, we can just click and drag and it'll insert it here. And be careful, if you have it smaller like this and I try to do the same thing then when I zoom in you'll sometimes notice like we'll move over see hey it didn't fill in all those so make sure you're zoomed in when you do this that'll just make things easier another thing you might want to do is like the velocity is a little bit high for a drum roll although it could be you know this high but what we want to do is just go to this pointer highlight all these then bring the velocity down maybe to here now this will give us a drum roll, but it still might sound a little bit robotic. Another thing we can change is the inaccuracy. When I have it at zero, that means everything's going to play almost completely robotically. If we move it up, things are going to be a little bit off time, which is, of course, no drummer is a, a robot, so that's going to happen. The second thing is the deflection. So if we have it at zero, it means everything is going to be the exact velocity we programmed it at. In this case, they're all the same. But by moving it up, I mean, some are going to be louder and some are going to be, uh, I guess, softer. And that's going to change every time. It kind of randomizes the velocity. And that'll give it a better sound. Uh, let me move out a little bit here and I'll play it for you so you can hear it. There we go. Now, of course, if you think, ah, I don't really like this drum sound. Like, I'm not really loving this for this drum we can always change it so i can change the drum drum track type in this case most of the kits have two snare drums so let's try snare drum two here see if this sounds better there you go and if you just want to uh, change it completely like let's say there's only one snare drum and you don't like it just go into the drum set editor and you can do that or you could even say like, oh, it only has one, you know, uh, snare drum. You could add the second snare drum, choose whatever you want, and just for this rolling part, use the second snare. But let me show you something else in here. So now we're using snare drum two here. Just click on that. I already have the advanced panel open. 
And from here, we can adjust various things. Something we might want to adjust is the realisticity. Ooh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. What this will do is it'll add some different changes, I believe, in pitch. Let's see if it tells us here. Defines how much the plugin should modify the sound parameters to prevent machine gun effect, which is very common when one drum is hit many times. So if you're just using one sample, you definitely want this on. Here we have multiple layers, as you can see here, but sometimes it still is good to turn this up a little bit. And Super Realisticity does the same thing, but it uses a little bit more uh, CPU. To be honest, the way it sounded before was fine, so I don't think you really need to turn either of these on, but sometimes you do just in case. You don't want that machine gun effect. As you heard, each time it's just a little bit different, and that comes from all the inaccuracy, deflections, and the realisticity settings. So that's a way you can do that. It's fairly easy. Another thing if you do, if you want a swell, just go here, and all you have to do is just click it like this, and it should swell up like this. There we go. I noticed as I was playing those one time, I was like, ah, oh, there's kind of like a gap, a skip in there I didn't like. So I turned the inaccuracy down a bit just to make that a little bit more even. Of course, adjust this all by ear. If you hear something like, oh, deflection's too high, there's just like one or two hits every once in a while, they're just way too loud, just turn that down. All the way at zero, I think eh, that's a little bit too robotic, but all the way up, maybe a little bit too crazy, depending on what you want to do. Now from here, you think, this is great, but do I have to do this for, you know, other ones, other types of drums? From here, you can just take this, make sure it's highlighted, which it was, but we can just move it up. So if I want to do the same thing with the open hi-hat, I have all the settings, they should be the same, and we can play it here. There we go. And we could edit things from there. Of course, you can go in here and, let's say, change the drum track type. I could try it on, let me see my ride symbol. I'm not sure if this is a good ride symbol for this, but let's hear it. Not loving the sound of that. There's different things you can change also, like the self fade out length, sometimes making that longer will help, or the only one instance, so let every one of them, you know, ring out a little bit longer, or the even fade out length, like this. Uh, just that to taste, see if it helps. And also I can try it on, you know, of course you could just change the drum type if you're like, ah, I don't like that one. Just change it to a different drum. Uh, let's try it on. Do I have a splash symbol? I'm not sure if I have a splash symbol. Let's try it. Let's see if I do. I didn't really like that. Let's try crash symbol. Okay, and also if you think like, eh, this might be a little bit too fast, I can go in here, erase all this, and I think, eh, let's try just this. See how this works for us here. Make it up. I think all the settings should be the same as what I had before. This may be a little bit too slow. So feel free to experiment with those. Sometimes you'll find ones like, oh, this setting is really good. Like maybe five here. Maybe this sounds a little bit better. I'm liking that better. And if I do like this, let's say I think this is great and I want to use this in the future. Like maybe I think ah, this would be good for let's say the intro of something, so right before it gets into the song. So I want it on the fourth beat here. And of course, I don't wanna spend my time doing this every single time. What I can do is I can just take this and say, save track. I go into here, I made my own category called roles. I'll, I'll delete this so you can see how I did it. So if I have the root here, these come with it, but I can just take this and say, create, 
roles. Now from here, I can just add something and I call it, uh, let's say, was it crash swell? Crash swell fourth beat. Okay. And now if I erase this, okay, and I think, ah, I like that. I want to add that in to a completely different song, let's say a month later or something. I just go in here and say load track, find the crash swell fourth beat, open it, it's right there. So I can just add it in there and I don't have to keep editing this every time. Everything is exactly how I want it and it saves you lots of time doing that. So I hope that gave you some ideas of things you can do and uh, that how you can do this. Uh, if you have any questions about it, of course, leave them down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.